Hello everyone, Brian Storyator here, a world history teacher here in the US, and also a content creator of uh, different history videos in Tagalog. But today I'll be reacting one of the videos from the Ledger channel. It talks about um, Philippine history in 12 minutes, and also I'll be giving some insights or standpoints, or I mean perspective, as to how they explain the history of Philippines. Without further ado, let us watch this video on the Philippine history in 12 minutes by Nalija Chana. All right. The history of what is today the Philippines started with the arrival of its first humans. It is believed they used rafts or boats around 60,000 years ago with groups of diverse people settling in the archipelago. Some of these groups started to develop and expand into bigger settlements, and in the next thousands of years, they evolved into what some scholars believe to be considered early states. Austronesians and afterwards speakers of the Malayo-Polynesian languages began to arrive in successive waves beginning about 4000 BC. According to the existing evidence, a jade culture existed on these lands, starting with the Neolithic era. By 1000 BC, it is believed that the inhabitants of the archipelago had... You know, one of the difficult parts of writing history, if there's no available documents to present, because when you speak of history, it talks about, you know, uh, no record, no history. So with the help of archaeologists and anthropologists, they help historians to provide and uh, make a story of what is behind of those uh, artifacts. Developed into four distinct kinds of people, tribal groups, warrior societies, the petty plutocracy, and the harbor civilizations. Also okay. important to note is the fact that the metallurgy reached the archipelago due to trade with India. Around 300 to 700 AD, the seafaring people of the islands began to trade with the Indianized kingdoms in the Malay archipelago and the nearby East Asian principalities, adopting influences from both Buddhism and Hinduism. Some cultures of present-day Vietnam showed evidence of an extensive trade network. Artifacts and goods were traded, such as glass, agate, or gold. There were also wow. other items present in the region Thank which were most likely imported, it. including ear ornaments that have been found in archaeological sites in the Philippines, Thailand, and Taiwan. The Indian culture influenced the Southeast Asian region, yeah. starting with That's the first sure. century. During the period of the South Indian Pallava dynasty and the North Indian Gupta Empire, Indian culture spread to Southeast Asia and it exactly. reached the Philippines, which led to the establishment of new kingdoms largely influenced by the Indian culture and traditions. The date inscribed in the oldest Philippine document found so far, the Laguna Copper Plate inscription, is 900 AD. From the details of the document, written in Kawi script, the bearer of a debt, Nam Warren, along with his children... That is why we have some uh, different uh, uh, terms that come in from the Sanskrit Indian language, something like that. Um, that's one of the reasons of, I mean, one of the effects of the influence of the Indians to the Philippines. Cleared of a debt by the ruler of Tondo. This is the earliest document that shows the use of mathematics in pre-colonial Philippine societies. A standard system of weights and measures is also demonstrated by the use of precise measurement for gold and other items, as well as in astronomy. From the various wow. Sanskrit Thank terms and titles seen in the document, the culture and society of the Manila Bay were that of Hindu Old Malay amalgamation, similar to the cultures of Java, Peninsular Malaysia, and Sumatra at the time. In the years leading up to 1000, there were already several maritime societies existing in the islands, but there was no unifying political state encompassing the entire Philippine archipelago. Instead, the region was divided into numerous semi-autonomous city-states under the rule of the plutocracy, while a number of states existed alongside the highland societies. These... You know, except from uh, having an empire to some uh, territories in the Middle East, uh, most of the countries at that time, uh, they don't have maybe the concept of centralized government. That's why it's more on a separate 
uh, different autonomous uh, governing body to different places in the Philippines. Maybe they don't have the concept yet of centralized government. Smaller structures alternated between being part of or being influenced by larger Asian empires like Maya Pahit. Yeah, Around 1225, Pahit. the nation of Mai, a Buddhist pre-Hispanic Philippine island state centered in Mondoro, flourished, attracting traders and shipping from the kingdom of Ryukyu to the empire of Japan. Chao Jakua, a customs inspector wow. in Fukian province, China, wrote the description of the barbarous peoples, describing trade with this pre-colonial state. Its people were noted for their honesty in trade. Much of what is now Indonesia was ruled by yeah, the Hindu Maya Pahit Empire. During the 1300s, this empire ruled over Luzon Island and the Sulu Archipelago. As more and more influence was on these islands, skirmishes and battles also existed. Some local tribes were waging incessant guerrilla warfare against them. Eventually, the kingdoms of Luzon regained independence from Maya Pahit after the Battle of Manila, 1365. Sulu also re-established independence, and in vengeance, assaulted the Maya Pahit province of Brunei before a fleet from the capital drove them out. The start of the Islamic era in Indonesia set the collapse of the Maya Pahit as its provinces eventually seceded and became independent sultanates. In 1380, Makdum Karim, an Arab trader born in Johor, arrived in Sulu from Malacca wow, and brought Islam to the Philippines. Additionally, Sharif ul Hashim, an Arab Muslim explorer, established the Sultanate of Sulu by converting its previous ruler, the Hindu king Raja Baguinda, to Islam and then marrying his daughter. The Sultanate of Magindanao rose to prominence at the end of the 15th century. Meanwhile, the religion was introduced to the area by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, Indian, and Malay regions who propagated wow. Islam to Sulu and Magindanao. As before, when Buddhist and Hindu cultures influenced the archipelago, the same case happened with the Muslim culture. Upon the secession of Brunei from the Maya Pahit Empire, they imported the Arab emir from Mecca, Sheriff Ali, and became an independent sultanate. The new religion started to grow roots in the Philippines through conquest and conversion of local leaders in the next decades. Moreover, Islam was further strengthened by the arrival to the Philippines of traders and proselytizers from Malaysia and Indonesia. Here comes the... In 1521... The the Spanish reached the archipelago through the expedition around the world, led by Portuguese-born Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Actually, prior to that navigation of Ferdinand Magellan, um, uh, six years, um, Vasco Nunez de Balboa saw already a body of water in the western part of the American continent. So, um, the time... Europeans uh, had idea of there is a body of water on the west part of uh, American continent. Claiming the islands he saw for the Spanish Empire, he established friendly relations with some of the local leaders and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. Because the Philippines are a large archipelago, the Spaniards started to explore many islands. However, the explorer Ferdinand Magellan was killed during the Battle of Mactan yeah. against the local ruler Lapu-Lapu. Over the next several decades, other Spanish expeditions were dispatched to the islands. In 1543, an expedition was led to the islands, naming them Philippines, in honor of Philip of Austria, who became Philip II of Spain on January 16, 1556. The name was then extended to the entire archipelago later on in the Spanish era. European colonization... Yeah, it, it was named by... Uh... Uh, Roy Lopez de Villalubas to honor the Prince Philip of, uh, of Spain. Yeah, that's uh, the time when Philippines was known as Philippines to honor uh, Prince Philip. ...began in earnest when Spanish explorer Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived from Mexico in 1565 and formed the first European settlements in Cebu. Through diplomatic and military annexation of some land, 
Yeah, to be exact, uh, 1565 was actually actually the year when um, Spanish um, Empire uh, decided to have a colonization in the Philippines. So in 1565, that is why uh, when we gained independence from uh, 1898, so to be exact, uh, we were colonized by by Spain for about 333 years. Right? Incorporating From local states, including the Kingdom of Tondo, the Spaniards established Manila as the capital of the Spanish East Indies. In 1578, the Castilian War erupted between the Christian Spaniards and Muslim Bruneans over control of the Philippine archipelago. The Christian troops were so diverse due to generally being made up of people under the Spanish rule, including Native Americans, namely Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans, who were gathered and sent from Mexico and South America to be led by Spanish officers that had worked together with native Filipinos in military campaigns across Southeast Asia. The Muslim side was also very diverse, though. They were supported by the Ottoman Empire, with their troops consisting of Malay warriors and expeditionary forces sent by the Ottomans, which included mainly Turks, Egyptians, Swahilis, Somalis, Indians, and others. Yeah, the conflict Ottoman ended so with a status the quo time. antebellum. Just 20 years after the conquest of Luzon, remarkable progress existed in the work of colonization of the islands and the spread of Christianity. A cathedral was built in the city of Manila with an Episcopal palace. Other monastery and churches were built across islands, and more and more people started to convert to Christianity. Furthermore, Spanish and Mexican families settled in the new lands, creating stronger communities. Much of the archipelago yeah. came under Spanish rule, creating the first unified political structure known as the Philippines. Spanish colonial rule saw the introduction of Christianity, the code of law, and the oldest modern university in Asia. The Philippines was ruled by the Mexico-based vice royalty of New exactly. Spain, and after... The colony was directly governed by Spain. Many of the local people revolted in the next... It was directly governed by Spain because um, Mexico gained independence from Spain in 1821. That's why we direct... I mean, we are directly governed by the Spanish uh, control. No longer a Mexican viceroy. Centuries due to some abuses made by the Spanish authorities. Their rule ended after the American-Spanish War at the end of the 19th century in 1898. The Philippines became a territory yes. of the United States. The, the, the United War. States then established the insular governments to rule the Philippines. In 1907, the elected assembly was set up with popular elections. The U.S. promised independence in the Jones Act to the country and the Philippine... Um, when we speak of imperialism, um, there are probably three types of that. It's, uh, the first one is the sphere of influence. Uh, the second one is creating a colony just like the Spain did. And the third one is creating a protectorate type of control just like the U.S. did to Philippines. More on protectorate. Okay? Wealth was established in 1935 as a 10-year interim step period to full independence. You, but before gaining total freedom, in 1942, during World War II, mm -hmm. the Philippines was occupied by Japanese forces. By 1945, the U.S. liberated the Philippines and the Treaty of Manila in 1946 established an independent Philippine Republic. The period of their independence was marked by internal skirmishes and a smaller period of dictatorship, but also huge progress and development, was, uh, with Manuel Roxas becoming the first the president of the independent is, republic uh, of the Philippines. The, US the United States seceded its sovereignty over the Philippines on July 4th, 1946, 46. as scheduled. However, the Philippine economy remained highly dependent on United States markets. Roxas died suddenly of a heart attack in April 1948, and the Vice President Elpidio Quirino ruled the country until 1953. Some communist partisans existed in the islands, but were defeated in the 50s. Additionally, an important event happened in the middle of the 1960s. Ferdinand Marcos took power in 1965 and ruled until 1986. This era included the final years of the Third Republic from 1965 to 1972 and the Philippines under martial law 19... 
1972 to 1981. His reign was marked by dictatorship and instability. In 1986, Ferdinand Marcos was removed from power and replaced by Maria Corazon Aquino. Up to the present day, five other presidents ruled the Philippines. Wow. Thank you, Malija, for a summary of our history for 12 minutes. And you're so uh, resourceful on getting some facts. You know, it's not easy to get some facts for our history. Thank you so much, Malija Channel. And all right. All right, thank you for watching on my reaction video about uh, Philippine history in 12 minutes by Nalejo Channel. Don't forget to hit the like and uh, comment down below for your inputs and insights about my video. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel of Nalejo. All right, see you on my next video.